I'm Andrarki, head of communications for Steemit, and this short episode of the Steemit podcast is the first in a new series we're doing in which members of the Steemit team discuss important software developments. In today's episode, I talk with Vandenberg, the senior blockchain developer at Steemit, about the new scaling project he's been leading called Mira, which is the software solution he architected in order to resolve Steam's hardware scalability challenges. Mira dramatically reduces the cost of running Steam nodes by migrating the Steam blockchain database, or SteamD, from expensive, high-performance hardware to low-cost, run-of-the-mill hardware like network-attached SSDs or even old-school spinning disk drives. Recently, I've been working on Mira, which is our brand new uh, blockchain scaling solution. It's a complete replacement for the database backend that utilizes technology called RocksDB, and will allow us to run the entire Steam blockchain much more cost efficiently on disks rather than on MVMEs or in RAM disk, and will essentially put our uh, hardware scaling issues to rest once and for all. When you talk about the hardware and, and the types of savings, first the first thing I'd like to know more about is what type of cost savings uh, we're talking about, but also why is that important for the, for the steam blockchain as a whole, for the ecosystem as a whole? So currently in order to run uh, a steam node, uh, you either, you need both a good amount of Ram as well as a fast disc because we are taking the entire database and do, using what's called a memory map file, we're loading it into memory. And it, well, it's a very quick and dirty solution that got us a whole lot of imp- uh, performance improvements when we launched it uh, a little over uh, two years ago. Uh, it, is, it does not scale well. We're running into significant costs with trying to um, keep all that data in memory as well as it's a very naive solution. Uh, Large scale databases are very particular about what data they keep in memory and what they keep on disk in order to be able to respond to database queries as efficiently as possible. And the current solution we have does uh, does not care about that at all. It's simply trying to get the job done in any way possible and Uh, Usually that's leading to significant inefficiencies. RocksDB, on the other hand, which is what's backing Mira, was designed from the ground up by Facebook to power their newsfeed. So it has efficiency and scalability as core design tenets. And Mira is an adapter that allows RocksDB to plug in with all of the blockchain logic that already exists in Steam. And by doing this, we're going to be able to much more efficiently respond to database queries to support apps such as steamit.com, uh, while, as, while also being able to cut costs for uh, users running uh, witness nodes or seed nodes by not requiring them to have as much of the data in memory at a time. In fact, we, we feel we can get the uh, memory requirements down from 32 to 64 gigabytes for a witness or up to a full node, all the way down to uh, eight to 16 gigabytes. So we're looking at roughly four times memory savings. And in addition, because RocksDB is more efficient at caching, the the disk that you can store on uh, will be able to be dropped as well from uh, state of the art uh, NVMEs to uh, run of the mill SSDs and likely even in, for some use cases, uh, actual spinning disks would also be sufficient. So we're really resetting the hardware requirements on Steam uh, to what it was when Steam first launched. And the technology is now in place to allow Steam to scale much more efficiently into the future, ideally on a course that will see hardware outpacing the requirements of Steam. So it might actually continue to get cheaper to run Steam despite the chain growing. Hopefully, uh, so long as you know, so long as uh, hardware improvements outpace the requirements of Steam, absolutely. The biggest 
uh, cost is going to be disk space, which as far as hardware costs are concerned is the absolute cheapest thing you can buy. So the blockchain will continue to grow, the state size will continue to grow, but because that can be stored on a slow disk, rather than have to be in memory, it's going to be much, much more cost efficient to, to run a Steam node. So I think you might be a little unfairly hard on yourself when you talk about the existing solution being naive, because as far as I know, every high performance blockchain out there stores their, their database in RAM to achieve their, their performance. And so we're not the only ones who uh, face this hurdle. We just seem to be the only ones actually developing a solution. Is that right? No, really the only other blockchain that's running everything in everything in memory is EOS. And that's because they're using the exact same solution that was developed for Steam. RocksDB is, is a fork of LevelDB, which is a fork of BerkeleyDB. Um, most blockchains, including Bitcoin, use LevelDB. And RocksDB adds a lot of, a, many more layers of uh, caching algorithms, uh, smarts on top of it that makes it more efficient than LevelDB and provides interfaces that are much easier for us to integrate into this, the code that Steam, the Steam blockchain already has. So most blockchains are running um, out of databases that are still on disk, but primarily that's because most blockchains don't have three second block intervals. Um, as Ethereum begins to scale and tries to decrease their block interval, and as other uh, fast DPoS blockchains be in, uh, continue to emerge, uh, the requirements for quick data access uh, become all the more important, in which case you need to begin looking at uh, better scaling solutions for your da backend database. Um, I believe Hyperledger is, uh, is actually using RocksDB directly as their, their backing database. Um, they're interfacing it with RocksDB directly rather than through an adapter like we are. Uh, but the adapter is, is really to uh, reduce programmer error. We have interfaces that are well-defined and work and are really, really easy to develop on. Uh, a big part of Steam's three month initial development time uh, can be attributed to those interfaces. That they're, uh, they're, they, they have really good C++ bindings um, that obfuscate all of the sort of database management and allow us to develop the code very quickly. And so if we were to build directly on RocksDB rather than through the adapter, all of the Steam code would have to be rewritten. Um, we'd be very error prone and would have taken um, many, many more months, if not years, uh, to do a refactor of that scale and to test and ensure that we didn't introduce any bugs. So is Mira something that other teams will be able to take advantage of? Will it provide value to anyone else in the blockchain space? So as it currently exists, it is very specific. Or it's not very specific to Steam. Rather, um, in order to speed along development, we've not made it as generic as it might need to be to be utilized uh, in another blockchain. But you know, we're like 90% of the way there. Um, so if we had some, if another team wanted to use it, uh, they would have a little bit of work that would need to be done, but it would be fairly easy for them to take Mira and integrate it into whatever project they're using. And in fact, Mira itself is, is blockchain agnostic. Um, any, anything that exists that actually pertains to the blockchain exists outside of Mira. And so Mira could be used for many other applications. And in fact, if I, if I were developing an application in C++ and I needed um, this type of database scaling solution that Mira provides, I would not hesitate to use Mira in the future. Interesting. Well, having seen how difficult a challenge it's been for you guys and, and how much effort it's required, 
uh, I'm sure teams will wind up uh, using it if only, if only to cut down on, on their development time. I mean, there's probably very few people in the world who can actually do that. It can actually work with Mirror at all, right? I mean, hope if, hopefully if we've done our job well and created good interfaces, then it won't be difficult to work with Mira. Um, in fact, the whole point of Mira was to, produ was to wrap RocksDB in an interface that matches what is provided by Boost multi-index containers, which are a more widely used library. Boost is, um, is standard in C++ applications. Sorry, what I should have said was few people could actually build Mira. Uh, I mean, I think anybody who's, I, I really think anybody who um, is an experienced C++ developer um, and did the research on RocksDB could come up with Mira. Uh, most of what the work we we did was digging into the Boost multi-index containers, looking at their implementation, and then um, swapping code out where needed to interface with RocksDB rather than the in-memory um, object structures that Boost multi-index containers do. So any of the Boost maintainers could have, could have done Mira. Um, maybe that's selling myself short a little bit because uh, those, those are some of the most talented C++ developers in the world. But uh, certainly, certainly skilled engineers are appreciated no matter, you know, what project they're working on. And, uh, you know, the whole, or the joy of working in open source is that we get to borrow great ideas from great engineers and add on our own ideas and let the rest of the world use it. And if there's enough of a demand for it, the code's there and anybody can use it. So it'd be awesome to see more projects take advantage of Mira, but even if they don't, you know, I still feel like I've contributed to the open source community in a meaningful way. And it, you know, is uh, filling a need that the Steam blockchain has, which e even, if, even if the Steam source code is the only code that uses this, every single person running a Steam node is going to be running this code and it's going to make uh, their lives easier and reduce their costs. So even if no other project uses it, there's huge impacts to our community and ecosystem and that makes the whole thing worth it.